How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about this little illness that is currently affecting Atlanta, Georgia, called the blue flu. A lot of you guys have been asking me about this, sending me direct messages, emails, you know, Insta face snaps, all kind of stuff about this particular thing. They're saying, hey, ABL, what's going on with the blue flu? Should we be worried about it? What's really going on? I'm going to explain all of what I know as it relates to the specific case in Atlanta. Now, the blue flu generally refers to when police officers all decide, you know what, I think I have the flu. I have, I'm sick, I'm sniffling, I can't go to work. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and call off, all right? And it's not just one guy, not just two guys, we talking about almost entire departments. As it stands right now in Atlanta, Georgia, the majority of their zones, I think there are six police zones, and for wrong, let me know in the comments below. But the majority of the zones and or I guess you would say districts in the city that police control do not have enough officers to really staff it properly. Most of the guys are just not coming in to work. OK, and it creates kind of a cascading effect because if a bunch of guys aren't on the clock, people are just staying home, not going to work. Then what happens is even if you are in favor of the cops getting charged, we'll talk about that in a minute, then you may want to stay home too because you don't have backup when you need them when you're out there, especially right now with high tension and a lack of patrol, you're going to have higher crime, more dangerous areas. It might make more sense for you as an officer to stay home, even if you think that the officer shouldn't have done what they did and they should have been charged. Now, Speaking about the officers got charged, that's kind of why this whole thing is happening. That's kind of why the blue flu has commenced down there in Atlanta, Georgia. We all saw the situation with uh, Rayshard Brooks. He was shot and killed at the Wendy's. You had the two cops that got charged. Um, the cop that shot Mr. Brooks got charged with like felony murder. He's facing life, no parole, and or the electric chair, death row, the rope, all that. So... Some are saying that the punishment was way too severe. At, at most, it could have been manslaughter. This is what I'm hearing from guys that are on the ground. And shout out to all you guys that let me know what's happening. I appreciate y'all. But this is what I know from the guys on the ground. Some say that it was a little bit too much. Some say that it was appropriate. Some say you shouldn't have got any kind of charges. There's divisions. But most of the officers that are just staying home, which I think is probably the majority of the force, or a large portion of the force, they feel like the mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms, and also Fulton County District Attorney, Paul Howard, do not have their backs. So they're pretty much just out there. They're, on, they're up the creek with no paddle, basically. And aside from the case with Rayshard Brooks at the Wendy's, there was also a case at a college about three weeks ago where you had six officers get charged for the way that they were conducting an arrest because of a curfew. Now, a taser was deployed in that situation from the officers. The same DA in the Wendy's case labeled the taser in the college case as a deadly weapon. So if the taser in the college case is a deadly weapon, then it must be in the Wendy's case. Therefore, the officer should have been in, within his right to return fire when the suspect pulled the taser and shot it at him, literally. So you're seeing some inconsistent ruling. And again, you might think the shooting was unjustified, justified or whatever, but you're seeing inconsistent rulings and decisions and political things that are happening. In the little press conference the DA had, he said at least one lie. I reported yesterday in my video about the officers being charged that the one officer who did not shoot the weapon was turning state's witness against the officer that did, but that's not true. Matter of fact, the officer's lawyer came out and said, we have not said anything like that, okay? All that they did say was that they will cooperate and tell what they know, give this out of the story, but that's not the equivalent to saying, I'm going to testify against the officer in the case, okay? Cooperate does not always necessarily mean I'm going to snitch. But aside from at least that one lie, upon maybe some other inconsistencies or mistruths that Paul Howard said. There's also the fact that he's in the runoff election right now. So you have a political implication. So like, here's the thing. What if people look at him as being soft on the officers, not going hard enough? 
that can impact him. And he also had some corruption up under his belt, you know, some allegations, sexual assault allegations, money laundering allegations, just allegations. I, I don't know nothing about nothing, but if you have allegations out there, things that make you look bad during an election, during a runoff, and at the same time, you have this case on your back plus the college case and you don't do things properly in the eyes of some people that could severely affect you. And that kind of leads into Keisha Lance Bottoms, the mayor who was out from the beginning and said that the guys that were involved in the Wendy's case should have been fired before you really had any kind of, you know, investigation. And by the way, speaking about investigation, the, Georgia Bureau of Investigation, I think it's called GBI. They're doing an investigation right now, and they did not know that Paul Howard, the DA, would do a press conference where he announced the charges. They're like, all right, well, we're still doing an investigation. We've not completed it yet, so, you know, this is news to us. You know, they are still going to conduct their investigation, and they may come back with something that's different than what Paul Howard said. But since Paul Howard did that, it would be hard for them to come up with something different because then there would be conflict right there. And do you want to really want to have that optically? It's going to be kind of hard to get that accomplished. But back to Kisha Lance Bottoms, she, I think, could be up for a VP pick from Joe Biden. I was saying that it wouldn't be anybody black, although that was like the, the wave and the movement on the Internet and everywhere else to get a black VP. I mean, it's kind of weird. You didn't really vote for the black president and you had plenty of choices this time you had kamala harris i guess she counts as black uh you had cory booker you had um deval patrick i think you had dwayne meesum the guy from florida not gillum but the other guy um you had a, a good four or five black candidates you could have picked from especially the biggest names i think would be cory booker and kamala harris but it didn't do anything they were really really low as far as the primary voting. I thought that it might be Amy Klobuchar because Amy Klobuchar did very well during the primaries. You get that white Midwestern woman vote. She would be able to help Joe Biden have some kind of moderate success in the presidential election, although they will ultimately lose. But Amy Klobuchar was soft on the guy Chauvin. And that's the guy that was involved with the death of George Floyd up there in Minneapolis. The guy that had a knee on her neck, that's that dude right there. She was soft on him. And that'll be used against her in this current climate we have right now of Black Lives Matter, hands up, don't shoot. So now they're trying to go back to the black vice presidential pick. Um, Stacey Abrams, not really visually appealing. She's been out there stumping for the VP pick for a long time, but she's not gotten a phone call from the biden campaign team let alone joe biden himself so i think keisha lance bottoms a little bit easier in the eyes as an actual mayor somebody that is in government unlike Stacey abrams so she may be um you know in the running to become the vp or even the governor or something like that or at least try, try to run for the governor so she has political aspirations too the same as paul howard so all of that's going on it's like what are you really going to do you have to be hard on these cases, harder than what you actually should be. So as a result, the officers are pretty much, like I said, up the creek with no paddle. There's no support from the mayor or the DA. And now all the, all the other officers are pretty much just saying, you know what? I don't want to do with it. I'm going to quit. I'm going to retire. I'm going to call out. I'm going to try to start a business. I'm going to try to do something else because I'm not safe here. I don't have any kind of support. I don't have anything here. And how could you really blame them? How could you blame them? You got DAs lying on the officers, all kind of stuff in press conferences talking about, oh, you want to turn state witness, just ridiculous and crazy stuff. So that is what the blue flu is. You got officers being treated like garbage, good officers now being treated like garbage, being held to all kind of crazy standards that the general public can't meet. And then they want to do all kind of crazy reform. The real reform needs to happen. If there's any kind of police reform, it can't happen without reforming the general public. Because a lot of these guys just simply don't care about authority. They don't care about the law. They're going to do whatever they want to do. And as a result, you're going to have a lawless place. All right. You don't need to defund the police. You need to really, you know, strengthen the police. If you're going to do any kind of reform, let it be to make the police more impactful rather than less impactful. Because when I hear reform, when I hear defund and stuff like that, what I hear is you want less police presence, less, 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 rather than having the police become better part of the community to serve it better 
you know, and having the police be able to enforce laws and having the police be able to defend themselves when the laws are on the line. OK, if a guy is shooting a taser at you, what are you really going to do? Just wait to get shot. My hat's off to everybody out there in Atlanta, all the officers participating in the blue flu. Uh, those that don't, those that still want to stay on the job. God bless you. I know it's going to be dangerous. I know it's going to be hard. I think that the mayor needs to step up. The DA needs to step up and the governor. I'm not sure what Brian Kemp can do or on a federal level what they can do, but there needs to be some support given to these guys out there in Atlanta. All right. You got because everything functions off of them. EMS, fire, say everything depends upon the police being able to do what they're supposed to do. OK, not just in ATL, but all over the country, New York City, especially shout out to NYPD, LAPD, uh, Seattle Police Department, Portland, Oregon. You know, as I close, we're going to say this, you know, you got the whole thing up there in free out of Washington, Chaz, Chop, whatever you want to call it, crack heroin, amphetamine zone, crack heroin, opiates, pills, whatever it is. Anyway, they are letting that just go on for days and days, weeks and weeks, whatever. The mayor talking about oh, it's going to be somewhere of love. But in Portland, the police were empowered. They were able to come into their particular little uh, offshoot chop zone and break it up immediately. Immediately. They have support from the mayor, the governor, I suppose, police chief, DA, mayor. Like, they have that support there. You need to have that support to ensure the safety of everyone involved. You know, the, the so-called peaceful protesters, they got to be safe as well as just a regular everyday normal citizen trying to go to and from work. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? Do you think that the Atlanta police are right to engage in a blue flu thing? If that's your viewpoint, let me know why in the comments below. Or are they incorrect? Should they just stay there and let whatever happen, happen? All right. If they get involved in a dangerous situation, you know, you got a crazy person high on drugs coming in, you know, trying to beat them up, throwing knives and stuff at them. Like, what can the officer do if they're going to get charged for hurting this person or killing this person when they have no other choice? All right. Sometimes you want to de-escalate, you want to avoid, but sometimes you can't. The police are called to go into dangerous situations. And if they can't handle the situation appropriately or properly, what else can they do but just say, you know what, hands off, y'all got it. Whatever your thoughts are. Please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.